In class, in this recording, we're going to focus on the anatomy of the upper respiratory tract. As we look at our nose, you know, we have the nose right here. The nose has some common parts, some common anatomy associated with it. And as we look at all of these parts, these parts all work together for these following functions. It helps to warm, cleanse, and humidify the air as that air travels through the external nares and is rotated around within the nasal cavity. Our nose allows us for us to detect odors and also serves as a resonating chamber. And you probably experience this. If you can plug your nose, you sound kind of funny when you plug your nose versus when you don't plug your nose because of the differences in how your voice is processed. Now, as we look at our nose, and I'll clear the screen right here, we have some openings on the outside commonly referred to as nostrils. The technical term for those is nares. And as we look at those nares, we have external nares and interior nares that are on the posterior of the nasal cavity, sometimes referred to as the posterior nasal aperture. We also are going to have within our nose some cone. Um, these cone can also be referred to as the posterior nasal aperture, but most people just say internal nares um, when I've looked at most recent textbooks. Now, as we look at the nose, the nasal fossa is a technical term for the left and right halves of our nasal cavity. To separate the left and right halves of the nasal cavity, we have a septum referred to as the nasal septum. And then that cavity, our nasal cavities are also going to have a roof and a floor. The roof and floor of the nasal cavity are going to be made up of the ethmoid and sphenoid bones for the roof. And the hard palate of our mouth is going to form the floor of our nasal cavity. And this hard palate is typically going to be formed from the two maxillae bones and the palatine bone. And as we're looking at this nasal cavity, this hard palate in particular for the floor of the nasal cavity allows for our nasal cavity and oral cavity to be differentiated from each other, physically separated from each other. And this is important. It allows for you to breathe while chewing food. And as an adult, I mean, it's a little bit, you, it, you could, in theory, chew food without breathing through your nose. You do it all the time when you have a stuffy nose. You can make it work. But think of it when you're a baby and you have to suckle to breastfeed, or you're suckling on a bottle. Babies and newborn infants don't have the ability to suckle and breathe at the same time if they don't have their nasal cavities separated from their oral cavities. So this is a really big developmental detail that allows for us to eat and breathe very early on in life. We also have paranasal sinuses. And these paranasal sinuses, as their name implies, para meaning around, or they around the nasal cavity. And sinuses means that these are air spaces. So these are air spaces near the nasal cavity. And we also are going to have a nasolacrimal duct. This nasolacrimal duct, it goes from the lacrimal uh, gland and takes the secretions of the lacrimal gland, aka tears, and will allow for them to drain into the nasal cavity. So we have other connections into the nasal cavity as well. As we look at the vestibule, the vestibule is that first opening within our nasal cavity. And let me go a little forward here. So we have that vestibule located right there within our nasal cavity. So if we could draw an imaginary line down, this is our vestibule right here. And let me back up a slide here. So as we look at the vestibule, it's just inside of the nasal cat, um, the nares, and it's going to have a stratified squamous epithelium. And you know what stratified squamous epithelium means? That means it can resist frictional forces. So in other words, when you see a little kid picking their nose a lot, the stratified squamous epithelium of their vestibule is going to resist the abrasion of the nose picker picking their nose. We also have a lot of vibrissae, and these vibrissae are very stiff, thick hairs that are going to block insects or very large debris from entering our nose. And on the posterior of our nasal cavity, as we actually say, as we expand or move posterior from the vestibule, the nasal cavity is going to expand. And then we have a large chamber, but there's really not that much open space. So let's go forward a slide here. Most of our nasal cavity, the volume of it is going to be filled with these folds. 
These folds are referred to as nasal conche or conche, and we have a superior, middle, and inferior nasal conche, also referred to as the turbinates of the nose, and these folds of tissue and bone project on the le the letter from the lateral walls of the left and right nasal cavities, and they do a very important thing for us. They create turbulence, and this turbulence that they create ensures that all the moist air or all the air that we breathe in, this dry air getting inhaled through our external air, gets into our nasal cavity and swishes around, whoosh, 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 swishes around, and is going to be moistened. We have a built-in humidifier. Also, because we're swooshing this air around in the nasal cavity, the dust that's in our air is going to get stuck to the mucus in our nasal cavity, so those nasal turbinates, or the nasal conche, aid with cleaning the air. Now, where does the air travel through the nasal cavity? There are little tiny grooves, and we refer to those grooves as a metis, or a narrow passageway that the air can travel through through the conche. So as we're looking at this right here, we breathe in dry air, and we humidify it and remove debris from it. But every once in a while, there's a booger. And I know, you know, most people don't pick their boogers in public, but every once in a while you need to shove your finger up your nose and pull that booger out. You can think of that booger as a dirty air filter that's being removed from your nose. That dirty air filter has cleaned a lot of air and gotten a lot of dust out of that mucus. Now within our nasal cavity, along the superior margin of the nasal cavity, we have an olfactory epithelium. And this olfactory epithelium is what we use to smell with. This is how we detect odors. So the air will rush past the mucous membrane of the olfactory epithelium and bind to dendrites of the olfactory cells. These olfactory cells or olfactory neurons are then going to be stimulated and send the signal through the openings of the cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone to the olfactory bulb of the cranial nerve, cranial nerve number two, one, number one, first cranial nerve. As we look at our respiratory epithelium within our nose, we have a respiratory epithelium that's going to line all of this nasal cavity, except for the vestibule, where we have a stratified squamous epithelium within our vestibule. This respiratory epithelium that lines the rest of our nose is a ciliated pseudostratified columnar epithelium with goblet cells. In other words, we are going to have a membrane covered in mucus because of these goblet cells, and it's ciliated, which means that we're going to have a bunch of small projections. There's some cilia right there that I just circled, and those cilia are going to move the mucus around that are, that's produced by the goblet cells within that pseudostratified columnar epithelium. Those, so the cilia are modal, they move the mucus made by the goblet cells, and that mucus is going to be moved posteriorly towards our pharynx. And when we think of pharynx, I want you to think back of the throat. That's what most people call their pharynx in common English. So we move the, the dusty mucus to the back of our throat where we swallow it and then dump it into our digestive tract where we have strong acid in our stomach neutralize most of the pathogens that were ingested. Now as we look at our nose, we have erectile tissue in the nose. And most people probably have to pause and do a double take. What? Is he talking about erectile tissue for with a respiratory system? This erectile tissue is not the erectile tissue of the phallic organ or the penis or the clitoris. This is erectile tissue that is located on the inferior conche of the nose. And this inferior conche will swell up periodically, left and right. Inferior conches will swell up. And this swelling of the inferior conche every 30 to 60 minutes is going to cause it to swell up and restrict airflow so that instead of having lots of air go through this nasal cavity, the air will go through this external nair instead. And we have lots of air travel through this side, which gives this half of our nose time to re-moisten, to recover from all of the dehydrating effects that encourage it, that, that happens as it's humidifying air. So this is a way that our nose can naturally shift 
breathing in and breathing out, inhalation and exhalation from the left external nair to the right external nair and back and forth, giving the various sides of our nasal cavities time to recover. That's all we have for this recording. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post them in the class discussion board or to shoot me an email. And as always, happy studies.